Welcome. My name is James Packman and I'm the Rector, the Senior Minister here at Holy Trinity Church in Nailsy and I'm delighted to welcome you to Sunday Catch Up. Sunday Catch Up is where we take the Bible reading and the talk from last Sunday but make it available on the internet to those who might be blessed and encouraged by it and I hope that you are. If you would like to be in contact with us, please do get in contact. The details are on our church website, uh, www.htnailsy.org.uk. Please let us know if you've got any questions or if there's any way in which we can help you at this time. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad you can. May God bless you today. Father God, we don't come to the Bible and have it read just because we should. We read the Bible because it's your word. And we're your children, your servants, those who want to love and follow you. And so our prayer is much like that of the prophet Samuel who said, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Our prayer now is that as we hear what is read and as it's taught to us, that we would understand more of you, that we would follow more wholeheartedly in your ways. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So Jeff's going to come and read to us as we hear what the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Galatia about how to live by the Holy Spirit. And then Ruth will come and speak to us. Yeah, book of Galatians, chapter 5. If you want to follow it in the Church Bibles, it's page 1172, starting at verse 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbour as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Well, good morning, everybody, and it's so lovely to be here with you today. I imagine there are a number of people there who are wondering, who is this woman who suddenly has stood up at the front? So I'll introduce myself. <laughs> My name is Ruth Jolly. I've been a member of this church for 30 plus years, but I'm not quite so often at this particular service, which is why you don't know me. I'm a licensed lay reader in the church. And um, I've been asked to speak about a fruitful year. Sorry about the gardening tips. If you've ever seen my garden, you'll know why none. <laughs> so last week, James spoke 
<coughs> about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and he used the uh, teaching on that subject given to us by the Apostle Paul in his first letter to the Corinthians in chapter 12. And James reminded us that our generous God has lavished gifts on us all, and that those gifts are there to be used. And he warned us against comparing one gifting against another, like a child on Christmas Day going, my presence better than yours, because everything that God gives us is good. And the things he supplies are the things that this church needs in order to grow and flourish. Our gifts are there to be used. But at the same time, St. Paul saw very clearly how easily things can go wrong. And I know I may seem to be stating the obvious here to those who, like me, have been going to church for a number of decades. But 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is immediately followed by 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And in fact, in the original letter as Paul wrote it, there was no chapter break. And so when Paul said... um, earnestly desire the higher gifts or the greater gifts and then I will show you an even more excellent way and then he says that way is love there's no stop and wait for next week at that point the gifts of the spirit love you can't have one without the other because we could have some of us do have an amazing way with words We could have, some of us do have, a supernatural gift of speaking in tongues. But, says St. Paul, without love, that's nothing but noise. And he says, if we massively give to charity, but there's no love involved, that's pointless. All the spiritual gifts in the world used unlovingly, that's just waste paper. And today's reading, in today's reading from Galatians chapter 5, He pursues the same theme, although it is in a different context, because the church in Galatia, they weren't vying over who got the best spiritual gifts. They were in danger of listening to another group who called themselves Christians, but claimed that to be a Christian, you had to keep every detail of the Jewish law, and that that included circumcising all the boys. And they said, you're not Christian if you're not circumcised effectively. And Paul was showing them that this is rubbish, that these people had completely missed the point of what Jesus did, what Jesus came into the world to do. Because Jesus, alone of any human being, actually did keep the Jewish law perfectly. And then through his death on the cross, he paid the penalty for all our failures to do what God wants us to do, all our wrongdoing. And he set us free. He set us free from the need to live by rules and regulations, free to live a life of love. That's what it said in today's reading and also what it said in 1 Corinthians 13. Without love, spiritual gifts are pointless. Without love, our freedom just becomes a new form of slavery. I did just think about this because what those early Christians were doing, they were trying to find something which made it easy to check whether you were in or out. If you'd kept the law, if you'd had your baby boys circumcised, you were right and you you, you kind of had a badge. Although it's a funny kind of badge. (laughs) And there have been other things like that over the years. Um, Some churches have massively overemphasized the gift of tongues and pretty much said, if you haven't got this particular spiritual gift, you're not the in crowd. You know, we do love there to be something that not everybody's got, but we've got, so that we know we're in. But that is not love. We do not need a physical sign or a gift as a sign that we belong. But there's another difficulty that can arise. When we start to think that being free means doing whatever we fancy. I mean, if I'm not bound by rules and regulations, then surely that means I can do what I like, doesn't it? It sounds like good sense. The only trouble is, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because we're designed to live in harmony with God. And God's love always turns outwards, away from self, 
towards others. Doing what I like means my love turning inwards to what I want, and that's never going to satisfy. Paul has a difficult task on his hands writing the reading that we heard read today because he's trying to tell the Galatians that they are no longer bound by the Jewish law. And at the same time, he's trying to tell them that living like a Christian, living as a Christian, looks awfully like keeping the Jewish law, but it's different. And he's trying to explain the difference. It's not just that we're no longer required to circumcise our baby boys. It goes much, much deeper than that. It's not a matter of how successfully we keep God's laws. We will never succeed completely. And if we're ever tempted to think that we're doing pretty well, we simply haven't understood what God means by love. Only one man ever lived a perfect life. That was Jesus. Only one man really put self on the back burner and other people first. That was Jesus. We're on a losing wicket if we imagine we can live God's way by our own efforts. So, twin dangers. The danger of saying, yippee, I'm free, I can do what I like, when what I like is unlikely to do me good. The danger of saying, all I have to do is keep God's rules and I'll be home and dry, when we can't keep God's rules because of our natural bent to self-centeredness and self-gratification. Oh dear. So all the kids got gifts God has given me are just waste paper if I'm not living a life of love. And I can't do that because only Jesus could manage that. Well, of course, there's an answer. As St. Paul said in verse 16, the answer is to live by the Spirit, to keep in tune with God, to keep our focus on Jesus and constantly turn to him for guidance and for our reservoirs of love to be topped up. If our will and our desires are lined up with God and we allow his Holy Spirit free reign in our lives, then our natural inclination to live selfishly isn't going to stand a chance. Though, it will be a battle. Paul says in verse 17, the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. Now there are times when we get really caught up in the joy of Christian living, and we're barely conscious of the battle because we just naturally want to do what God wants. There are times when we forget to let God lead us, or we really can't be bothered anymore. And we'll hardly be aware of the battle because we've stopped trying, so what what battle? And there are times when we will feel that battle raging within us. And we find we're struggling all the time in our desires, fighting against what we know to be good and right. Don't believe me? Ever looked at a box of chocolates? and been tempted to sneak the strawberry cream or maybe the salted caramel before anyone else can get their filthy mitts on it. So that's not a big deal, but it's certainly not loving my neighbour. It's loving me, isn't it? So, says Paul in verses 17 and 18, no, we can't do just whatever we want, but nor are we legalistically keeping a set of rules. If we are led by the Spirit, we will naturally do what is right. But at the same time, he's clearly concerned that this young Corinthian church may not have understood what living by the Spirit should actually look like. And so in verses 19 and 20, he lists the sort of things that their selfish human inclinations may pull them towards. And if we've been living a Christian life for quite a long time and we just skim over these quickly, we may manage to feel quite smug. Of course we don't live like that. Sexual immorality, drunkenness, witchcraft, orgies, perish the thought. Although 
the temptations are real, and we do get influenced by the world around us. Just be aware of that voice that says, did God really say you can't do that? It's what the devil said to Jesus. And then again, there are the other ones that I didn't just list. Discord, jealousy, selfish ambition, envy, factions. You know, I'm pretty sure I've never been in a church which didn't suffer from those. Not all the time, not constantly. What about me personally? And then against that, in verses 22 and 23, he lists the characteristics which people should be seeing when they look at Holy Trinity Nailsy. The characteristics they should be seeing when they look at me and when they look at you. Love. Joy. Peace. Forbearance. That's accepting one another warts and all. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And when I look at our church, and when you look at our church, we do see all those things, just not all the time and in all circumstances. There are times when it's really, really hard to put up with one another's little ways. There are times when we think we are right and everybody else is wrong. There are times when we provoke one another. There are times when we irritate one another, when we envy one another. There are times when we go all out for what we want, ignoring the fact that it might not be what other people need right now. If ever I was tempted to think that I was getting somewhere with these little things like forbearance and gentleness and self-control... This past week, when I've been convalescing from COVID, has shown me what a long way I have to go. Yes, I know, it's normal to be irritable when you're recovering from an illness. You don't have to tell me I know that, but fruit of the Spirit, it is not. Now, a tree can't grow fruit. This is the gardening bit, are you listening? A tree can't grow fruit by willpower. Given the right conditions... The right soil, the right rain, the right sunshine, the right nutrients, it will naturally produce fruit at the right time. We can't produce the fruits of the Spirit by gritting our teeth and keeping a whole list of rules and regulations. But given the right conditions, bathed in the light of Christ, washed in his blood, and giving free rein to his Spirit, we will naturally produce fruit at the right time. And we're different from trees. We have a choice. We have a voice in the matter. We can choose life. We can accept the freedom that Christ won for us on the cross. And day by day, hour by hour, we can turn our focus on him and allow his spirit to work in us. God has lavished on our church all the gifts that we need to flourish in 2023. If we're going to be the church that God has called us to be, if we're going to spread the good news of Jesus to those around us, if we're going to bring light into the darkness of this present age, we need to use those gifts for the good of all. But the greatest of these is love. And without love, we're just noise and rubbish. Since we live by the Spirit, says Paul, let's keep in step with the Spirit. Or as another one of the New Testament letters puts it, the letter to the Hebrews, let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him 
who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Consider him.